In this video, I'm going to show you 12 JavaScript tips and tricks that I use every day in my job as a developer. The first trick is to remove falsy values from an array. We can call dot .filter on the array and simply pass in the boolean constructor. We run our application. You can see that we get our strings and our numbers. Notice that it also removes zero because zero is a falsy value. The second trick I use is to use console.trace to log with a stack trace. So you can see we have this function here, foo, which has a function called bar, and it also calls bar. And inside of bar, we call console.trace. So let's run this. And you can see here, we get a stack trace of what was called. So if you want to see the call stack of your application, simply put in a console.trace and you will get some really handy output for debugging. The third trick I have is to destructure arrays into objects. So we all know that you can destructure an array. But did you know you can destructure this array into an object with named properties? So I'll say my zero value is en. My first value is fr. And my third value is de. My third trick is to switch out a lengthy switch case for an object. So we have this switch case here with three cases and a default case. So we can simply make an object called const channels equals. And then we can take all of these case statements and make these the keys. And then we can make the console log the value. So to get the value out of our new object, we could say const result equals channels, and then we can pass in the value. If you want a default result, you can simply use the logical or operator, and then we can pass in our default value. My third trick is to use top level await in Node.js version 14 or greater, where you either have type as module in your package.json, or you're using a .mjs file. So you can see in this application, I have my type as module, and this is going to allow me to use top level await. You can see I have a function here that returns a new promise, and I'm going to await this promise without wrapping it in an async function. Type node, and you can see our application waits for one second before it prints the last console log and exits. My sixth JavaScript trick is to use async await instead of dot then and dot catch. So you can see we have this promise here and we're calling dot then and dot catch, which is fine. But as soon as we need to nest some properties, this is going to become really messy. So we can refactor this with a simple async await. So I can say const result equals wait, I promise. And if we need to catch the error, we can wrap this in a try catch block. And now we can just return out our result and we can log our error and we have some much cleaner code. My seventh trick is to create a pipe function. So you can see we have all these functions here, double, triple, half, and reverse. And to use these functions, I'm going to declare a number and I'm going to call double with the property of 10. And then I'm going to take this number and pass it into triple. And then I'm going to take my tripled value pass it into half, and then I'm going to take the result of that and pass it into reversed. There is a stage two proposal for a pipe function that will look like this, but it is not yet in any version of JavaScript. So we need to create our own pipe function. So we can create this function like this, that's going to take an array of functions, and then it's going to take a starting value. And then we're going to pipe all of our data through our functions. So to use this function, I'm going to say const result is equal to, and then I'm going to pass all of my functions in as arguments. And then I'm going to pass in my starting value of 10. So you can see that this is now a much cleaner version of what we had before. My eighth JavaScript tip is to use the ternary operator instead of if else statements. So we have this result here, and then we're saying, if this is true, then assign this string to result, else assign this other string to result. So this is messy for two reasons. One, it's 
more code than we need. And secondly, we're mutating the value of result. We can change result to a constant, and then we can say equals is true. We can use our question mark, and then it's going to use this first argument if the true is in fact true, which in this case, it's always going to be. Else, we're going to use whatever is on the right-hand side. My third trick is to format stringified objects. So you can see that we have this object here, and I'm going to log this to the console. And you can see, we just get this really flat object here. We pass in a couple of properties, null, and I'm going to use two as my spacer. Now let's log this object again. And you can see that we get a nicely formatted object logged to the console. My 10th trick is to conditionally add to objects. So you can see that we have these properties here and we have this person object. And if I log our person object, you can see that gender is undefined. Well, we only want to add gender if it is defined. Let's say dot, dot, dot. And then we're going to open some brackets. And inside of our brackets, I'm going to say gender and end. Then I'm going to create a new object and I'm going to pass in gender. So this is going to spread our new object onto our person object, but only if gender resolves to truthy. So let's log this again. And you can see that we don't get gender on here anymore because gender is in fact faulty. My 11th trick is to use optional chaining to safely access deeply nested properties. So you can see that we have this object here and we have a user and a name, but down here, we're trying to call .person.name and this is going to throw an error. You can see that we get an error, but we don't want to throw an error. We just want to return undefined. So let's use our optional chaining operator which is a question mark and then a dot. And now we can safely access this property. Let's remove this one that's gonna throw an error. And you can see that we get undefined instead of an error. So my 12th trick is to use memoization. So we have this Fibonacci function here and we're using recursion to calculate the last number in this Fibonacci sequence. So we can see if we pass in 10, we're going to get back a value of 89. But if we pass in something a little bit larger than 10 and we pass in 100, you can see that my computer is going to struggle to calculate this number. So to make this function a lot more performant, I'm going to use memoization. So I'm going to start by passing in a second argument to the Fibonacci function that is called memo, and we're just going to default this to an empty object. And then I'm going to say if memo num, return memo num. Next, we want to say memo num equal to our Fibonacci call. So when we call this function here, we're going to assign this to our current number. And so if our current number has already been calculated, we don't need to calculate it again by calling the Fibonacci function. So finally, we need to pass the memo object into the second argument of each Fibonacci function call. So let's run this function again, and you can see that we very quickly calculate this large number here. And my last trick is something that you can use to impress your friends and family, and that is the logical or operator. And this is a bitwise operator in JavaScript. So we have this array of numbers here, which includes six ones and a stray two. So if we want to find what stray number is in the array, we can create a function called stray number. And we're going to take an array in this function. And now we're going to return array.reduce. And we're going to have an accumulator and a current value. Now we just need to return our accumulator, use our logical or operator and we can use this on our current value. Let's say console.log stray number, and we can pass in our nums. I'll say yarn bonus. And you can see that we get back two. This is not a great way of programming this function, 
And I'll show you why. If we put a three in this function and then console.log this value, you can see that we now get one, which is the most commonly occurring number. So that is my 12 JavaScript tips and tricks. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure you give it a thumbs up and to subscribe and turn the notification bell on. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.